Welcome to Mackey Arena. I hope you're having a great Sunday morning. I'm Rob Blackman. He's Chris Foreman. It's time for a little Boiler Ball pregame show as we get you ready for today's matchup between our third-ranked Purdue Boilermakers and the Maryland Terrapins, the first of two regular season meetings between these two teams. We will make the trip to College Park, Maryland, uh, coming up in February. Uh, as I said, I'm Rob. He's Chris. We have a lot of things to talk about today because a lot of things have happened since the last time we visited with you here uh, on the internet. A number of historical things have happened. Maybe I should put it that way, Chris. Let us start with the number 400. It's actually now 402, but the number of coaching victories for Matt Painter here at Purdue, he is now in some elite company. Yep, uh, reached the 400 win mark last Friday night against Nebraska here at home. Uh, he became the fifth coach in Big Ten history with 400 wins at a school, at a Big Ten school. Tom Izzo, Bob Knight, Gene Cady, and Lou Henson. An unbelievable crowd. He's 52 years old. Like, you think about that, he's got a long time still to come. Um, you know, whether he can get to the record of, of Bob Knight or whoever holds it, I don't know, but he's got a lot of wins coming, and he's already had a lot of wins under his belt. We talked about this last Friday. Maybe the most remarkable part about all of this, in Matt's first win, uh, first season here at Purdue, they only won nine games. Yep. So he didn't start off with a great season, but he certainly has picked it up since then. All right, so that's the number 400. Now let's move to the number 200. That is also significant for us now here at Purdue. Yep, he became the seventh coach with 200 Big Ten victories. Uh, did that against Michigan State on Monday. Again, same list, add Branch McCracken. I can't remember the other person, but seven coaches. He needs about six more to pass Branch McCracken, I think, for number six, seven on the list. Again, 200 wins at a Big Ten school. Says a lot about what he's done here. Uh, pretty significant. By the way, seven of those wins have come against Maryland. Today's the 13th all-time meeting with Purdue and Maryland. Purdue's only 7-5 and five against Maryland. We didn't start playing them until they joined the Big Ten, so there's not a lot of history there, but of the 12 games that we played against the Terrapins, basically they've all been very close. Yeah, they've been a lot of nail baiters. Two two straight games this time determined by one point. One in College Park two years ago where they beat us with about two free throws with about three seconds left. Right. Jay Nivey last year hit a shot in the lane uh, with about 10 seconds left to give us a one-point victory over Maryland. Five, four, three other meetings, sorry, have been determined by three points or less. Seven total by five points or less. Just a really competitive series. Have not blown them out. They have not blown us out. Just it's been a back and forth in College Park here. Uh, hopefully it's not like that today. Hopefully we can build a little cushion, but it's been a great series so far. They have a new head coach in Kevin Willard. They have a couple of new additions to their roster that you'll watch play later on today, including Don Carey and Jameer Young, two of their better players. But a little different looking Maryland team than we've seen in the past. It's still a very good team. They started the season 8-0. Uh, and oh. All right, as we continue to go up, what I like to call inside the numbers. If, if, Purdue wins today, Chris, Boilermakers will be 19-1. 19 wins in your first 20 games. If we go back over the last 25 years or so, that has rarely happened with a Big Ten team to start 19 and one. Yeah, Purdue will become the fifth Big Ten team since 2000 to start 19 and one. Uh, most recently, Michigan in 2019 did it. I think they started 19 and one. But before then, there's not a lot of teams that have done it. Uh, Illinois, when they had the great run in 2005 to the national title game, did it. Um, I'd have to remember, look back, but. Not a lot of teams have reached 19 and 1 in the Big Ten. It's obviously a great start for the Boilermakers. Hopefully, we can keep it rolling. And I think most of our fans know this, but 19 and 1 would be the best start in Purdue basketball history. The reason because 18 and 1, where Purdue is right now, is the best start ever in Purdue basketball history. Let's continue to go inside the numbers, shall we? Fletcher Lawyer, Big Ten Freshman of the Week and Big Ten Co-Player of the Week. It is very rare that a Purdue player is named the Big Ten Player of the week as a freshman. We have to go all the way back to Robbie Hummel in 2008, who actually did it in February the week before. Each one more did it as well. So there's only been three players in school history that have done that, have been a freshman to earn player of the week honors. You look at what Fletcher did. It was for his game against Nebraska. He scored 27 points, set a freshman school record with six three-pointers. This isn't even including the game Monday against Michigan State where he, in the last five minutes, kind of took over the game and had 14 points uh, that he either assisted on or scored on in the last five minutes against Michigan State to help us to that win. Obviously, he's off to a great start this season. 
And, uh, you know, we might have a different freshman this week when, you know, with Braden Smith was his game against Minnesota the other night. Yeah, he flirted with a triple-double, did Braden Smith, in that win against Minnesota. While we're staying inside the numbers, let's just keep going. Minnesota, Thursday night, scored 12, count them, 12 first-half points. Last time that happened? 2012 against UNC Wilmington. I got too much stuff in my brain here, Rob. Um, 2012 against UNC Wilmington. It's the fewest ever by a Big Ten team. Uh, Purdue's defense was sensational the other night. Just did not let Jamison battle Dawson Garcia get going. Those two were a combined 3 of 22 from the field. And remember the first meeting, they scored 70 points against us, so they can score, but Purdue just shut their water off, as the coaches say, and just did not allow them anything to get going. How amazing is it that the same team in the same season, for the moment, has scored the most points against Purdue and the least amount of points against Purdue. Yeah, it's wild that there's only been two teams that have scored 70 against us. One's Marquette, who's obviously a very good team. They're top 10 in the country in the net. And then Minnesota, who's struggling this year, but they did have a good offensive game against us the first time. So only two teams have scored 70 points against us. Really speaks volumes about Purdue's defense this year. And uh, help me, I think there's only one other team in the country that can claim that, right? Yes. 70 or less? Yep, St. Mary's is the only one that can uh, say they've allowed all opponents to score 70 points or less. So obviously a lead company. The defense from this year to last, from last year to this year is completely different. The guys have bought in and have really gotten after it on the defensive end. Purdue is currently top 20 adjusted defensive efficiency in the country. They're number three adjusted offensive efficiency in the country. The only team in the Big Ten that can say they're in the top 20 in both of those categories. All right, we normally like to close it out talking about Zach Eady because why not? He has been dominant from day one as Zach Eady. He continues to be that way. Four block shots in the game Thursday against Minnesota. Although he did not have a double-double, which in a lot of ways is kind of an amazing statistic because he had been on a heck of a run of double-doubles. Yeah, he had 10 straight. Only Terry Dishinger and Dave Shieldhouse had had longer double-double streaks than Zach Eady here at Purdue. you got to go 60 years ago to find someone that's done a longer. Not even Caleb Swanigan did that, who had 28 double-doubles during the year. The run that Zach's been on has been absolutely amazing. Minnesota really did a lot to take away from him in the in the second game. He had 31 and 22 in the first meeting. So they obviously changed their defense, but it allowed Braden Smith, it allowed Brandon Newman, it allowed Mason Gillis to get going on the three-point line. That's going to be what teams are going to have to do now. It's going to be pick your poison. Let Zach go for 30 or get hold him, hold him to 15 and let the outside guys cook. So either way, you're going to have to pick your poison. Zach only had nine field goal attempts Thursday night. Again, what Chris was talking about, no need. And just one free throw attempt. Really shot three free throws as a team, which is the fewest in a long time for us. So Speaking of free throws, here's a number that blew my mind. Chris Foreman gets all the credit. In the last five games, five games, all Big Ten games, last five of them, the opponents have made, have made combined 20 free throws. Yeah, Purdue, games. yeah, Purdue's defense, again, not fouling. We're only averaging about 13 fouls a game, which I know against Michigan State, that was a source of uh, consternation with Zach Eady not having any fouls, but we digress. Um, but yeah, we're only averaging about 13 fouls a game. Opponents are only shooting about nine free throw attempts a game, which is absolutely amazing. It's the lowest number in the country by far and that I can find in the last 30 years. So Purdue's defense, once again, just doing it, doing his job without fouling. And a lot of it goes to Zach because he is such a dominant presence in the paint. He scares people from shooting. And now, by the way, since we last spoke on last Friday, Zach has moved into the top 10 all time in career block shots uh, here at Purdue. All right, we've been giving you all these numbers so you can impress your friends and family before the game today. You'll really sound like you know what you're talking about. Here's the last one that you can take with you today. Three-point shooting for the Boilermakers. It was really bad early. It's been really good as of late. Yeah, we're shooting about 44% the last five games. Before that, we were shooting about 23% in the five games previous. So I think the guys are getting more comfortable. They're understanding what's going to be coming to them. When they when they attack Zach, they're going to be open. They're going to have to knock him down, and they have been the last five games.
He is Chris Foreman. I am Rob Blackman. You can hear me on the radio broadcast starting at 12 noon today with our pregame show. This is a 101 tip, 101 for Purdue and Maryland here at Mackey Arena. Thank you so much for being a part of our day here. For Hunter, who worked for things uh, behind the scenes for us, and for Chris, again, I'm Rob Blackman. Thanks so much. Purdue basketball coming up at 1 o'clock today here at Mackey Arena. Purdue and Maryland in a Big Ten battle. Have a great day, everyone.